So we've had the Panigale V2 for the last couple of weeks. What a phenomenal bike it is. But it kind of has that middleweight superbike part of the market sewn up kind of for itself now that bikes like the GSX R750 are out of the European market at least anyway. So we're at an airfield anyway and we thought what a fantastic idea would it be to put these two bikes head to head and see which one's fastest. So, Panigale V2, Ollie, which, you know, how do you think that's going to fare up? Obviously, four cylinder versus V twin. I think the V twin is going to be slightly easier to get off the line and pull away quicker because it's got that low down grunt. Obviously, the four cylinders, you need to rev it a bit more to get it off the line, and sometimes you can slip the clutch if you don't get it right and bang on. But I think the four cylinder Juxa will pull away maybe 80 to 100, but I think off the line, the Panigale's got it. Um, just have to wait and see, what do you think? Well, I think they're very close spec-wise, aren't mm, they? Definitely. You know, this is meant to have like 150 at the crank, this one's 155. This one, obviously, the Panigale's got quite a bit more torque. Definitely. And you can definitely feel that when you ride it. It's got so much more wallet, you know, when you jump off the V2 straight back onto mine. Mine feels flat as a pancake. But I know how quick this is as well. So initially, when I was coming here, I was thinking, do you know what, I wouldn't ride the jigs are off because I know how quick it is once it gets going in the in the real rev range. But then again, I've watched these guys, uh, both Jeff and Ollie, fly up and down the runway on it today, and I'm thinking, I'm not so sure now. So genuinely, don't know the answer. That's it. We we honestly don't know what's going to happen, but I think they're going to be really close. It's all down to the launch and how fast you can get, you know, up to that 60 mile an hour, and then I think they'll be very very similar in speed. More revy, more torquey. I don't know, it's, it's, I can, honestly couldn't tell. <laughs> well, should we stick our lids on and our gear on and let's, do it. Uh, let's go and give it a shot. So this is the debrief after the race. Was quite close, but for me, there was a winner actually. <laughs> yeah, so it was very, very close. Um, it was really down to the start, how fast you could launch and get up um, in the gears, because the, the V2, the first gear, you, you, you're basically changing second almost straight away, because it gets up to speed really quick. Yeah. Um, it's been a bit of an eye-opener, to be honest, mm. because I did, I did think this would um, hold its own. Although I have to say, um, I'm not quite sure whether we haven't burnt the clutch out on this. <laughs> Try to launch it, because that is one of the things that you need to do with the GSX-R, is if you don't get that launch bang on, and you aren't like absolutely in the rev range, um, that is gone, you know, and there is just absolutely no catching you. But once I did get this, the launch 
bang on. It was quite close. Yeah. I would say, still say though the Panigale V2 is is, is slightly quicker. It is quicker. I think you can be more lazy with the gear changing and yeah, the, I do. you know you can you can pull away. You can just hold it open and you can just bang it out of the box. With the Jixer, you have to get the revs perfect on the launch, don't you? Right yes. at the right. If it's too low, it'll bog. If it's too high, like you said, the, <laughs> the clutch might slip slightly. But um, yeah, you can just hold it in, hold it in gear, and just go up through the box, and it'll just hold its own. But um, it's a very quick bike. It surprised me. It's, ma it's massively it's... impressive. What you find with the V2 launching it, in fact, you can be pretty lazy with your launch. You can cock your launch up proper. Eat, you know. Uh, bad on the V2, and because you're straight into the power, it's just not. We we'll just make up for it. Well, you just make up for it basically because you're just straight there, and it was exactly the same with the Vip Pillen yeah. because it almost didn't matter how bad you got it off the line because you were straight there. You just maximised it, so it's quite easy to maximise the power. I should say that's what that's yeah. what I think. Where this was, yeah. a, this was, a, you know, the the, the sort fine of, line between getting exactly. it wrong and getting it right. Definitely, that, that's it. But you know, we give them a bloody good go. Um, I hit the le rev limiter quite a few times on my bike, <laughs> trying to stay with you. But it was quite close up to about, what, 140, 150? I think, you know, off camera, we've hit, we've hit about 160 as well. Yeah, definitely. Did I you think hit slightly faster than that? I, I think, think, yeah, about 165-ish indicated. Yeah, that's but fast. I think we made it as fair as possible. We turned the wheelie control off, all ABS traction control was all turned off on this one, because obviously there is no rider aids with that. So we made it, you know, as far as we could, but it, it just has that grunt over it, I it think. Um, but Well, that really showed when we did the in-gear. Definitely, yes. Didn't yeah. it? Because that, that was where it really, really made a difference. Third was pretty drastic, actually. As was second and fourth, yeah, you know, yeah. but I think probably third was the, the most showing. For sure. For it's sure. opened my eyes. This is a really serious bit of kit, <laughs> and it's, it's very, very fast. For sure. Um, yes. Massive amount of respect. And beautiful. And beautiful too. <laughs> so, beauty and the beast. <laughs> so, just a quick update. If you want to race a Panigale V2 on a GSXR 750, you best be prepared to change your clutch, and that's exactly what we're doing now, because it was absolutely toast after racing that bike, but there we go. Right, so I just thought I'd share a quick update uh, since we've been to the airfield and probably about a month after or so. Number one, yes, I did change my clutch. It was absolutely roasted, uh, but now it's all hunky-dory. And the second thing is that actually last week we did a couple of track days, uh, one at Snetterton, and then we went back to Donington Park as well. As part of the Donington Day, I was actually riding in the same group as the Art of Racing team, who actually race in the BSB Ducati Tri-Options Cup, which is the cup that they run the Ducati Panigale V2. That was absolutely fantastic, and those bikes look really cool. They've done them in a pink livery, and it, you know, it's just sort of super standout. Um, and you know, basically, what we found at the airfield just sort of relates exactly to how. Um, I found those tra uh, those bikes to be on the track. They were really quick. And look, while those were race bikes, um, in line with the technical regulations that they've got at the Tri Options Cup, you know, it's not like they're so far removed from road bikes that they pair no resemblance. You know, they're pretty similar, really. You know, it's got a they'll have a race fairing on. They've got the Akropovich exhaust, the official uh, Ducati remap. Um, race suspension, racing tyres obviously, and obviously very good riders as well. But it's not like they're incomparable to the road bike, you know, they've just had a little tweak, they've not tuned the absolute crap out of them. Um, but what I did find was even really trying to hang with them, and I did for a little bit, but the corner exit on those bikes is absolutely unbelievable, you know, and I can be sort of mid-corner, almost with them but they get on when they get on the gas that corner exit grunt is just phenomenal they, they just bugger off down the straight basically and there's no there's no keeping with them and obviously they're very good riders as well um, so that again that was really really eye-opening what i would say is um, from my point of view now looking at my 750 and the, the the v2 and some of the other bikes out there that do track days and stuff if you're looking at like a sort of 600 being here, um, the 750 sort of coming around here, 
and then in terms of acceleration this is and speed a thousand being up here i would definitely say that the v2 is sort of around this sort of area um, in my experience and being on track all day with one i think they're closer to a thousand cc than they are to um, this 750 basically there wasn't a lot that was leaving him to be fair I think they have a lot of that corner exit grunt and straight uh, away out of the corner sort of speed, but perhaps just don't have the absolutely manic 1000cc top end that you'll see on, on you know, the V4S for example, or the Jigsaw 1000R for example, that sort of bike. So I suppose the takeaway really from there is that if you're considering a bike like this, a 600 or 750, but you're a little bit worried about keeping up with perhaps your friends who've got a thousand cc's or something, but at the same time, you're not quite ready for that absolute intimidating and frankly scary top end that a thousand cc has got. I actually think the, the Panigale V2 is about the sweet spot. I don't really think that you're gonna be left by the thousands um, because you know often they have they have people backing off because they are so scary what you've got with the v2 is a lot of that corner exit grunt but you've got a very stable machine one that you can absolutely maximize and i think it is the new modern sweet spot that this used to sort of operate in probably 10 or 15 years ago so super impressive bike um, that V2 is, I really reckon more people should consider it and I'm certainly impressed anyway. So I hope you've enjoyed that one. Please like, please comment, please subscribe, please check out the Knox range and we'll see you next time.